Good morning, meteorologist John Hamanuk with Empire Weather here with your latest agriculture and energy long range video update. A lot to talk about. Just going to start with a quick discussion of what's going on this morning. Clearing out across the large majority of the northern plains, the main rainfall area that remains is here across parts of Dakotas into northwestern Minnesota, this system moving northward into Canada, but still some areas of rain this morning across the eastern Dakotas and northern Minnesota with lightning shifting very gradually to the north and out of the country. If you look further south across the plains, it's mostly quiet this morning across Minnesota as well as southern, uh, southern regions of South Dakota as well. Shifting into southern Minnesota and Iowa, we do have some showers moving through, and we are expecting the development of some showers and storms here later today. After the big thunderstorm activity yesterday in the Midwest, it's quieted down a bit. We still have some showery activity, but not expecting much in the way of heavy rain or impactful weather in this area today. Most of the shower and thunderstorm activity is now shifting way off to the east. You can see this area of showers and storms uh, in the eastern part of Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. As we move through today, the Storm Prediction Center is anticipating a couple of areas of thunderstorm activity. The main one for later today is going to be over central and northwestern Iowa, southern Minnesota, and eastern Nebraska. This is where that slight risk of severe thunderstorms uh, is in place later today. Zooming in, you can see that region here over Iowa. The main risk with thunderstorms will be wind and hail, a very small risk of an isolated tornado later today as well. Here's a simulated radar through this afternoon. Here's the activity from this morning, moving from the Dakotas northward into Minnesota and out of the country. We will quiet down for the rest of the afternoon and temperatures will warm up significantly. Here's what it's going to feel like across a large majority of the belt this afternoon, feeling like the 100s in parts of Iowa, all the way into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. These are real field temperatures, so the combination of the temperature and the dew point here are the actual temperatures well into the 90s across a large majority of the region as this ridge moves overhead. Later this afternoon, we expect the development of showers and storms first in central Nebraska and then spreading eastward into Iowa. So we are looking at the likely possibility uh, of showers and storms overnight. This is valid at 11 p.m. on the latest NAM model. So again, just one weather model's idea as to what might happen. Uh, but this is the possibility of heavy precipitation uh, for some regions in Iowa. And you see that corresponds pretty well with where the Storm Prediction Center has that risk of a hail, uh, wind, and maybe even an isolated tornado through tonight into Iowa. That shifts eastward into eastern Minnesota and Wisconsin. And we get our next disturbance coming through on Wednesday. You can see widespread showers and storms developing uh, across the northern plains here, including South Dakota, Nebraska, and Minnesota on Wednesday morning and afternoon. While the warmth and dryness begins to continue here in parts of the Midwest and Ohio Valley, not expecting much in the way of precipitation there over the next couple of days. Meanwhile, we are expecting a risk for more widespread severe weather on Wednesday across the Midwestern United States, the Storm Prediction Center has an enhanced risk, so that's a level 3 to 5, in parts of northeastern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Now that risk tomorrow on Wednesday includes the possibility of more substantial severe weather. If we look at the wind outlook for tomorrow, we see a 30% region, and if we look at the tornado area, we see a 10% region with the possibility of some significant tornadoes as well. You can see that evolving here Wednesday afternoon. Here's your threat area, Iowa into Wisconsin and southeastern Minnesota on Wednesday. That frontal boundary eventually shifting off to the east Wednesday night into Thursday before gradually dying off as it does so. So, this pattern is active for a couple more days. Here's the precipitation through Wednesday night on the latest European model, and you can really see exactly where the area of concern for precipitation is. So these are rains in parts of central and eastern Nebraska, as well as parts of Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and into central Wisconsin. Here's the next 72 hours, and you can see that that rainfall there in that region is kind of the focus here. This is from this morning. This is kind of the focus uh, over the next couple of days, at least through Friday. You can see that the rains that spread off to the east are pretty inconsequential through Friday. And that's when the pattern really begins to change across the belt after these next couple of days. Temperatures have started to warm up significantly. We just talked about those 90s. And you'll notice that this front that comes through here Thursday into Friday doesn't really do much for the Midwest of the Ohio Valley. It does cool things down a bit across the northern plains 
but it doesn't do all that much for the Midwest or Ohio Valley until the weekend, and that's when we get a little bit of a cool shot coming in while the plains begin to warm up substantially. So let's dive into the long range. We know that we're going to see that warmth increase here over the next couple days. So this is valid through Tuesday. This is the area expecting to see temperatures over 90. That's a huge area of the United States and even in the central US, quite a large population. Here are areas that could see temperatures over 100. And you can see that includes a lot of the central plains, parts of Minneapolis, western uh, Minnesota as well. Fairly anomalous for this time of year. So let's break down what's going on and why this is all happening uh, and look at what's happening in the pattern across the hemisphere. And I want to talk at least a little bit about the Pacific jet stream. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a, quite an active pattern and quite an active jet that has come into the United States. And that was all associated with a Pacific jet extension. So that's when uh, and we're looking at the North Pacific Ocean here. So the United States is over here. This is California, um, Washington. Here's British Columbia. This is Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. That jet stream that has kept the active weather conditions in place and kept things moving along over the last couple of weeks, it was all associated in, with the specific jet extension. So this long jet that comes out and extends almost zonally from uh, Eastern Asia through the Pacific and towards the United States. What's happening now is the pattern hemispherically is changing. The forcings of the pattern are changing. And so that jet is breaking up into all these individual pieces. You can see through the middle and end of this week, that pattern is already, that change is already underway. And we have um, kind of a broken jet here, more of a wavy pattern uh, as this snaps back a bit. And that's going to lead to some pretty significant changes uh, across the hemisphere. When we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, we still have this sort of warm blob that exists here in the central Pacific. And we have this cooler water here off the Pacific Northwest that's continuing to encourage troughing in this region. As this warm blob here continues and we know we have that jet kind of backing up and becoming more wavy, that all is going to aid and support the development of ridging in the central United States. And that's why for the last couple of months, we've been a bit concerned about what could happen here from late June into July. Now, not to you know get the alarm bells ringing at this point, but just to kind of validate the ideas, we are starting to see the models come around to the ridging developing in, uh, in the central US late June into July. The MJO uh, is changing as well. We had a MJO wave that came out from East Asia through the Pacific over the last couple of weeks. Now we're seeing a bit of a change. MJO is likely to get itself more reestablished here eventually, uh, closer to Eastern Asia and maybe possibly the Central Pacific here uh, as we move into late June and early July. But the structure of the MJO and the forcings on the pattern are different. And it's all going to work to support the development uh, of these ridges in the central US, especially as this Pacific jet kind of backs up uh, into more of a wavy pattern over the next couple of weeks. And you can see that here on forecast models, we're losing a lot of that momentum from the Pacific jet moving forward. So what are forecast models showing and what is to be believed, right? We have this ridging developing here across the central US through the weekend, and that is a pattern that obviously supports warmer and drier weather. You can see uh, troughing developing off the east coast, keeping things cooler here in the northeast. And we have an additional trough that develops out of the Gulf of Alaska into the northwest states. Now, eventually, this trough is going to come over the top of this ridge here in the central United States. But what happens right afterwards is the forcings that are acting on that pattern come right back into play. <clears throat> and so we get another trough. We mentioned the SST configuration. We get another trough that comes out of the Gulf of Alaska and drops down into the west coast, while we get an additional support for troughing in the east. And that leaves a ridge again in the central United States. And this pattern on models kind of just repeats itself as we move into late June and perhaps even the early part of July. This type of pattern, if we zoom in and look at what is really happening here in the United States, when we know we have the support for this across the hemisphere, this kind of pattern supports overall warmer than normal temperatures in the central United States, which you can see being indicated here on the European model through the 24th of June. And it also supports drier than normal conditions across the central United States as well, which you can see here through the 24th of June as well, precipitation departures running solidly below normal on the latest European guidance. <laughs> Looking ahead, there's more uh, to be taken from the latest weeklies as well, which keep that central US ridge rolling through at least the first week uh, of July. Here's the first week of July ending on the 8th of July. And if we zoom in, we can see that ridge is still 
kind of elongated here across the central United States. The seven day temperature anomalies for this week remain well above normal across a large majority of the central United States. And the precipitation anomalies for that week are still drier as well. And so obviously from a agriculture perspective, when you get into the late June period, that dryness is not necessarily the worst thing over the next 10 to 14 days. And the warmth is not either. But once we start to get into the early July period, the sensitivity will begin to increase a bit. Now there are some signals that this ridge will begin to retrograde back to the west. You see the models initially have it here centered more in the plain states and by the time we get into the mid-July period, it's back into the Four Corners region, at least the center of the ridge axis. But it remains to be seen how far west those temperature anomalies will shift as well because that is still generally a warmer pattern um, overall. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on was precipitation. There's been a lot of sensitivity around the weeklies precipitation ideas, and I think it's important to break that down here. Um, now, the European weeklies are obviously quite dry into late June and then early July, and I think that's um, obviously a pattern that we have to look at as a distinct possibility, if not a likelihood at this point. But I noticed a couple things with the pattern that got my attention. First of all, the precipitation signal increases along the East Coast and even into parts of the Ohio Valley by the time we get into the middle parts of July. And if you look at what's happening across the hemisphere, that makes a whole lot of sense actually, because you really are taking a ridge that was centered across the central United States. And on the ensemble mean, you're backing it to the West. So here's that ridge axis again from the Midwest into the Ohio Valley. And the model backs up this trough here into the Gulf of Alaska and this ridge all the way back to the four corners here by the time we get into the middle of July. This is the second week of July. And so with this ridge here in the eastern U.S. off the coast of the Atlantic, the western Atlantic ridge here, and this secondary ridge here on the four corners, it's this area here that has my attention as the, a possibility uh, where models are might, maybe not picking up on the, the idea of the wetter pattern. Now, wetter is obviously a word that we use operatively here. It's not necessarily wetter than normal, but it may not be quite as dry as models are suggesting. And obviously, for agriculture perspective, this is a huge focus. Uh, this area would be, if you were to look at this synoptic pattern, right on the fringes and in the area where you could possibly see some thunderstorm complexes coming over the top of this ridge and impacting this region. And that precipitation anomaly that you see here backs up and stays along the East Coast and then it finally begins to inch its way back into the Ohio Valley. Verbatim, the dryness continues, but I think this is an area that we really need to watch through mid-July. Uh, and obviously, if that dryness and warmth leading up to that period does exist, it's going to be even more critical to get the moisture into this area through mid-July. So that's something to really watch is right on the periphery of this ridge uh, as the ridge backs up to the west to be able to get a slightly cooler and wetter pattern really from the upper Midwest down into the Ohio Valley uh, would be critical. And that signal is definitely there. If we back this up, we have this big time dryness initially, which we have from late June. And then you can watch that as we go into early July. This is valid on the 4th of July. That dryness has continued the seven days ending on the 4th of July. And then as we move into that second week of July, you see that precip signal begin to increase here. And I think it's especially important to watch the periphery of this ridge right here as we move into early July. So let's run through the highlights one more time. We know that the pattern is going to trend uh, warmer over the next several days. We know it's going to trend drier. This is the seven day precip anomaly. And I just want to start here on the uh, next seven days, 20th of June, rolling that forward. We see that dryness continuing as we move into late June and perhaps even early July. From a temperature perspective, the next 10 days, likely warmer than normal across a large majority of the central United States. We'll watch some temporarily cooler risks in the Northeast states during this time but warmer for a large majority of our agriculture focused regions. And then as we move into late June and early July, we'll watch this ridge back up specifically in early July into the Four Corners region here and possibly hopefully introduce the risk for some precipitation on the periphery of this ridge here um, in the Midwest and Ohio Valley. I expect the sensitivity to this warmth and dryness will increase pretty substantially over the next couple of days, probably by this time next week. And we'll start to get really focused on this first to second week of July period as a critical time period across multiple sectors here uh, with this warmth and dryness moving into a critical period here in early July. We will be with you over the next couple of days and weeks. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Happy to help uh, as we go through uh, an important time frame here. For now, I'm John Hamnock with Empire Weather. Have a great Tuesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow.